How you doing, family? Hello, hello. We are out enjoying a beautiful morning, sunny morning in Kigali, Rwanda, and uh, on the continent of Africa. So mm -hmm. this is exciting for us. It's a beautiful day. Yes. We need to get out earlier though, right? Because yeah. it's a little cooler this morning than it was yesterday, but um, it's nice, a little breeze. Birds are all out. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to flip the screen and and we are enjoying ourselves really just chilling under a shade tree it's a nice neighborhood beautiful houses and things like that here i'll even zoom in on a house do we live in one of these fabulous <laughs> mansions no we do not and that's by choice yeah <laughs> So, uh, just nice to look at though. I guess part of the reason why is because uh, there's a lot of uh, ignorant kind of things that are floating around out there, like folks are still living in huts and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yes, there are shanties. Well, at least that's what I call them, where you might have a metal roof or you might have simply um, a place to lay one's head. But that's what's interesting to me. There is a place that someone has to lay their head. And there's even, when I've talked to folks from Africa, from the, and I say it like that because they're from so many different countries, it's just easier to say the continent than to sit here and list every country of friends who stop by our house and sit down and eat with us are from. <laughs> So anyway, and plus most Americans just think of the continent of Africa. I know it is not a country. You don't have to keep telling me that. But anyway, I digress. The point is that um, there are folks who just think that there's nothing nice in Africa. And we're surprised by some of the questions or thoughts we get that uh, for some reason think there, there's this, yeah, there's hard times and stuff like that but there's also you're probably going to be considered very wealthy if you come here so which is why we came <clears throat> one of many reasons because it is actually our dollar goes a whole lot further here you're able to employ and help the economy the local economy yes. we have a chef which is nice she comes once a week and a lot of people do that you know, and she makes food from here and other places. And so we're thankful to be able to, to help her. To have someone come and garden, take care of the, the yard, or also uh, folks to drive you around. This really helps her economy. And they're so appreciative. They're so kind and everything like that. Um, but anyway, in terms of uh, when one might move or where if they're thinking of leaving the u.s just a couple off the cuff thoughts this will be more organized at another point in time but um can't stress enough to know your values by values i don't mean that you don't steal i mean values like what do you what interests you what uh what kinds of things actually uh, are what you're looking for? And sometimes I use the example of me being a motorcyclist. So I just might like pave roads like South Africa or something like that, or uh, Dar es Salaam. Um, somebody else might like the mountains and the wildlife, the gorillas of, of Rwanda, Uganda. Um, somebody else might like the um i don't know the urbanization in nairobi or something in kenya or something like that 
And it's not like you have to stay wherever you are. You can go and visit different countries. And uh, it's, it's a blast. But uh, beginning with what you value, people need to really take time to think about that versus listening to people or following advice from someone who really has not lived on the continent. I'm talking more than a month. Okay, so because um, I figure somebody's going to take a vacation of at least a month if they're going to travel this far to get here. But I'm, I'm talking beyond that. That would be like taking um, financial advice for, from someone who really has um, debt, has not accomplished anything. And all the money is, it's just a, a way to keep score. That's really all it is. Um, don't worship it or anything like that give thanks and praises to the most high for it but realizing that it's something that um, just helps you track how well you're doing why because um, where your money is there your heart is and so people want to succeed at things but a lot of times they don't want to manage their finances and put their money towards something so that their heart can follow there. I almost consider it a blessing that the gardener charges us or that the uh, chef charges us. Um, you say, why? That sounds ignorant. <laughs> well, no, not exactly. Because um, we also desire to help the locals and to help the people. and. Again, the biblical principle is, the principle is, from the kingdom, where your money is, your heart follows. So people mostly look at that in a negative, but they don't realize it's neutral. It's just a statement. And so if, you're, if you really believe in something, your heart will be there. And the way you'll know it's there is your money goes there. So if somebody really wants to move to the continent of Africa, they will invest themselves and invest their money in finding out ways and researching and learning all that they can because no one can do it for you. Just like no one can tell you who to fall in love with. No one can do it for you. So you've got to have that kind of a mentality. Those, those are just some thoughts that I have um, just in general. Do you have any thoughts about this stuff? No, I, well, I do agree with uh, everything that you've said. And it's like when you're talking about you know places uh like i said on the continent especially for people that have not even been here you need to know ahead of time what is it you want and like you said the various places the roads and things like that you've got to know what you want and then that'll help you to know where it is you want to be <laughs> yeah i think knowing what a person wants seems to be one of the more difficult things in life because we don't like to commit um, because if it doesn't work out, we look foolish. But part of learning is being at level one. If level one were not knowing how to do something versus level five being professional expert level, you could do it with your eyes closed, your hands tied behind your back. As people get older, as we become adults, we don't like embarrassment. We don't like to look like we don't know what we're doing. And that's sad because that means you've literally stopped learning and if you stop learning you stop living <laughs> because living is about learning and constantly developing yourself constantly researching constantly being simply curious in fact that's a technique from coaching that a person can use and say you know I'm just curious to see what would happen if dot 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 if I did this what would happen if I did that what would happen so just thoughts with regards to uh, learning and living. Speaking of living, that's another thing. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I wonder if people are really living. I know for me, that was a challenge. I'm, and I'm going to go ahead and just put it out here like this. And that is, I felt like uh, the Most High, Yahuwah, had instructed me many years ago and saying... Um, you're not really living. That's what I actually heard from him to me. It was a rebuke, but his rebuke uh, has goodness in it and it led to life for me. The, uh, the principle is the goodness of Elohim, the goodness 
of Adonai, it leads to a changed behavior or it leads to repentance. And it really did for me because I was like, oh my gosh, you're right. I'm not living, I'm not experiencing an abundant life and all that he has for me. And so it, it meant just trying to change direction, make a 180 degree turn and begin to approach life differently and to experience it. One of the things I used to say is uh, I'm taking life for credit. I'm not auditing it. <laughs> you know, in college courses, you could do that. No, no, I'm taking life for credit. <laughs> you know, so just some things to think about as we sit and enjoy this quiet, peaceful neighborhood. I feel like we need a miniature golf course right out here somewhere. I don't know. Yeah, it's big enough. <laughs> <laughs> we need to be playing croquet. croquet. <laughs> yes, yes, croquet. Yeah, well, uh, yes. yeah, that's a lot of fun. Look into that. <laughs> so, just some miscellaneous random thoughts. Uh, remember, our channel exists if you are interested in visiting or uh, moving to the continent of Africa. So if you're not, you're free to change the channel. Um, you can even use the remote if you'd like, okay? But for those who stick around, uh, we hope we've got some great things in store. We hope you're enjoying what we're sharing and we thank you. So having said that, toodles. Mm -hmm.